Welcome back. While there was an agreement on the important role of education for unity and security in the region, it was only in 1992, during the fourth meeting of the ASEAN heads of governments in Singapore, that were their efforts for greater cooperation in education. One outcome of this was the establishment of the ASEAN University Network in 1995. AUN's strategic focus built on those identified by ASEAN to facilitate regional cooperation in developing. To strengthen the existing network of cooperation among universities in ASEAN and beyond to promote collaborative study, research and educational programs in the priority areas identified by ASEAN and to promote cooperation and solidarity among scholars, the academe and researchers in the ASEAN member states and to serve as the policy-oriented body in higher education in the ASEAN region. Take a look. ASEAN University in really started when the education ministers in this region sat down for the first time in 1977. So in the past, of course, it was uh, to support the, uh, the main goals of ASEAN, which are about peace and stability and uh, economic progress and social development. And the role of education uh, was one of the uh, vehicles, the sectoral vehicles to, to support uh, the furthering of these uh, regional objectives and goals that were enunciated since 1967. Along the way, of course, um, with the enunciation of the ASEAN community 2015 and the three community pillars, political security, economic, social, cultural, the role of education has also been to see how it can be a part of and to support ASEAN integration. The ASEAN University Network began with 11 universities, and as ASEAN expanded, so did the AUN. It has since grown to become a highly visible organization, with a membership of 30 universities, all of whom are nominated by the respective ASEAN member states. By serving as a policy-oriented body for higher education in the region, and by fostering cooperation in research and teaching, the network seeks to strengthen the quality of human resource development and higher education across ASEAN. So at this point in time, it's really about getting the leading universities in the region to sit down and network together, talk about uh, issues that will have to be uh, resolved in terms of credit transfers, accreditation, even syncing the academic semesters and of course facilitating student exchanges and mobility, cross-border mobility for students, as well as uh, seeing how uh, the different academic disciplines in all these universities can also support the ASEAN integration goals and uh, prepare the young people for uh, professional or workplace mobility. While there is much work to be done, to realize the full potential of cooperation in education, universities in the network have benefited from their membership. The National University of Singapore is one of three universities representing Singapore in the AUN and has been part of the AUN since its formation 21 years ago. We are very much part of Southeast Asia and it's important to get to know our neighbours, the universities in our vicinity. Yeah, I think AUN has tremendous impact because we are working with young people. We are working with the top echelon of society, the people who will be the business, political leaders of tomorrow. And if we at this level can uh, give our students favourable uh, impressions and favorable working relationships within the region, I think it bodes well for ASEAN and Southeast Asia. Besides institutions of higher learning, efforts have been made to promote ASEAN awareness at all levels of the education system in member countries. After the 11th ASEAN Summit in Kuala Lumpur in 2005, ASEAN education ministers identified four priorities in education cooperation. An outcome of this was the development of the ASEAN Curriculum Sourcebook as a tool to advance an understanding of the ASEAN identity as well as to develop in young people a better understanding of the diversity of cultures across the region. So the motivation always was 
to provide a reference source for teachers um, in primary and secondary schools mainly uh, to be able to impart uh, what is it about ASEAN to the, their students. And of course, this takes different forms. So rather than developing it as a curriculum and uh, requiring countries to straight away put it into their national curricula, uh, it has always been the intention to provide it as a teaching resource. And the curriculum source book's main intention was to help foster that sense of uh, the identity of being part of the region, what it means uh, to have that kind of uh, the cultural identity. The extent to which the ASEAN curriculum source book has been introduced and used differs across member nations. A major challenge is that while agreements to cooperate at the regional level are reached, individual countries still have to balance regional commitments with national priorities and interests. It is in the interest of every ASEAN member state to maintain ASEAN as a united and strong organization. A weak and disunited ASEAN serves nobody's interest. All of us in ASEAN, all ten of us, serve two sets of interests, our national interests and ASEAN regional interests. And I think when this is true of all countries, and our first foreign minister, Mr. Rajaratnam, said this in a seminal speech he made 45 years ago in August 1967. Nonetheless, cooperation in the field of education has laid foundations of peace and stability in the region. Efforts such as developing an ASEAN curriculum and introducing ASEAN studies in schools or even the setting up of an ASEAN university has not only helped to bring people together but also forged a sense of regional identity.